let's talk about why we see Realtor.com, Zillow, Trulia, and others that are actually ranking on the first page for these real estate searches, because these are there's a lot of traffic for this stuff. Hey guys, John Crenshaw here from uh, UFO. Just uh, wanted to talk about Zillow and how they're ranking so well in search. Really quick, if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe, like this video. Um, that helps us a lot. That helps the algorithm uh, get these videos found. Uh, if you're seeing it on social media, like it uh, or follow us on social to see more of these. Uh, that stuff helps a lot too. So I wanted to talk about Zillow. Zillow's killing it in an SEO and there's a few other sites that really do well for, um, for real estate related searches. And I've talked to a lot of real estate agents and uh, real estate companies, uh, like brokerages, larger ones, um, on how they can rank and how they can improve uh, rankings in, in search. And you know, a lot of what I say to realtors is that you're, you're probably not gonna beat Zillow. You're almost, in fact, you're never gonna beat Zillow. Um, you're probably never gonna beat some of these other bigger guys too. We can see realtor.com here. Uh, Zillow is up there, Truly is up there. Redfin's a national site. So. Let's talk about why we see Realtor.com, Zillow, Trulia, and others that are actually ranking on the first page for these real estate searches, because these are there's a lot of traffic for this stuff. And there's something we can learn from this for all of SEO, and that is meeting the searcher's need with your content. And when I say content, when I talk about content, I mean any page, this could be anything. So uh, I'm not talking about blog content or article, I'm not talking about text content, I'm not even talking about video, I'm talking about anything that's on the page. Uh, your content could be a tool, it could be video, it could be imagery, it could be a map, it could be almost anything. I'm just talking, when I say the word content, I'm talking about the content within the page. And that is so crucial to ranking in, uh, in search. And I often see people make the mistake of thinking that SEO is about plugging in the right keywords into your title tags, uh, having them show up the right number of times in the page, getting backlinks to that page, things like that. And those things help, those things are definitely important. But the key detail that, that people often overlook in SEO is that the most important thing, the mo single most important thing that's gonna determine whether or not you get ranked and also whether or not you get traffic in general, also from other sources, right? Not just SEO, is how useful that page is for the person doing the search, okay? So think about what is the person's need when they go do a search, whatever it is, and it varies, right? Every keyword's a little bit different. Two people might search the same keyword and have different needs, slightly different needs, right? You can imagine a scenario where I search for uh, polarized sunglasses and I might be looking to buy polarized sunglasses or I might be looking to learn about polar polarization and what that is and why those are sunglasses are different from non-polarized sunglasses. So you can imagine, both of those people could search the exact same keyword, right? So even within a keyword, there's a lot of uh, variations of what we call intent. And intent is just whatever this person set out to do, what is their goal when they went and did a search? And what we find is that meeting that intent better than the competition is the single most important thing you can do in SEO. And incidentally, outside of SEO, that's also the single most important thing you can do to get people to visit the site from other sources, right? If I'm looking for a property in Cincinnati, for example, and I go search houses for sale in Cincinnati, the page that's gonna meet my need as a searcher is probably also the page that's gonna meet my need if I'm looking for houses on any other channel. If I'm thinking in my head, hey, you know, I wanna, um, you know, I wanna shop for a new house in Cincinnati and I happen to be on Facebook or I happen to be on Twitter or I'm sitting on my couch watching a TV, uh, TV show. The type of content that's gonna meet that person's need across those channels is probably gonna be fairly similar. Right, And so what we find is that when you meet the intent of searchers and you, you do it really well, uh, you start getting traffic from all kinds of sources. It's not just SEO. Uh, so this is a way where SEO can, you can use SEO and performance in SEO to sort of just create, use it as a guide just to create better content. Um, so let's talk about why these guys are ranking. So we can, we can see, here's what I searched, houses for sale in OTR Cincinnati. You could also search, let's just do a little bit broader of a search, houses for sale in Cincinnati. And so the number one here is Realtor. That's actually surprising. Usually it's Zillow and Trulia. So Realtor's clearly doing something right here. So let's take a look at Realtor.com. Let's look at Zillow.com, Trulia, and Redfin. Let's look at these top guys. And so if you think about what is the need of a searcher when they search houses for sale in Cincinnati, right? They're looking for a list of houses for sale in Cincinnati. And in all likelihood, they need that list to be 
um, to be filterable, to be useful, right? And the more the more useful that list is, the more likely they're gonna uh, come back to it, the more likely that's gonna rank in search. And so we can think about what Realtor's doing here as basically just a list of houses, right? But it's formatted in a way that's easy to browse. Um, it's got imagery, right? Images are probably like, you could call that the primary piece of content for each house uh, shown on this page. And that makes sense because real estate is a very visual thing. I can look at a house and really quickly determine, is this sort of the type of place I'm looking for? And that's probably the easiest way to make this page really skimmable, right? Which makes it useful, okay? If we're just thinking about being useful, let's ignore, in fact, ignore SEO completely. Ignore everything about SEO. Just think about what makes this page most useful for somebody searching for property in Cincinnati. Big images, right? Really quick rundown of like the important information, pricing, uh, bedrooms, baths, the address, uh, maybe I would actually argue the address is not that important. What what would probably be more important here is the neighborhood. Unless you really know Cincinnati, you're not going to know where all these streets are necessarily. Um, I grew up there my whole life and I don't know that. So I would argue the neighborhood is probably the better piece of information here. And then they've got a call to action to email an agent. But then they've also got ways you can filter this content, right? So we can we can filter down to the number of beds, the number of baths, property type, price. There's all kinds of functionality that they've layered on top of this list, right? So this is just a list of properties, but they've layered all this extra stuff on top of that list where it's so much more useful. So we've got the images, makes it easy to scan. We've got prices, makes it easy to scan. The important information here makes it really easy to filter that or to scan through it. We can also filter, we've got this filter functionality, which makes it really easy to just get rid of all the stuff I don't actually want, right? And you can imagine for somebody searching for a property, this is a good approach. You could improve on this, like I said, instead of the address, use the neighborhood, that would probably be better. And there may be some other things there you can really think through, like what does somebody really need when they're skimming through this list? And you could probably improve it a little bit more from there. But it's a, it's really the answer to what is the best piece of content for somebody searching for property in Cincinnati or anywhere really. The answer is that it's a, a tool just like this, right? You know, you can imagine, compare that to a blog post. You write, if you're a realtor and you write a blog post of all the, you know, the newest properties available in Cincinnati. That's not really gonna meet my intent as well as this because I could probably search by new or filter by new. Uh, and if I can't, that would be, um, there we go, newest listing. So I can sort this list by new, uh, the newest properties. Um, so I can already get that information here and then so much more, right? I've got images, I've got all this stuff that makes it just more, much more functional than a blog post. And so a blog post, you're never, you're almost never gonna see a blog post outranking these tools for real estate related searches. And that's why, because it's just a fundamentally better experience. And what Google's doing is trying to figure out what do you want when you search real estate, when you search houses for sale, what are you looking for? And what site and page on that site gives you the best experience for that search? And in particular meets the broadest variety of needs for people searching for that, for that term. And so you'll see that across the board. Zillow's same thing, right? It's a slightly different type of list, but it's basically the same thing. If we go over to Trulia, again, same thing. And then Redfin, same thing. They're all doing the same thing. And there's a reason they're all ranking and you know, individual realtors are not. And um, real estate brokerages that are not using a tool like this are not, are not gonna rank probably. Unless there's, you're, you might see it occasionally, but it's really gonna only happen if there's minimal competition, like maybe you find some really niche sort of neighborhood that for whatever reason, none of these other sites have covered. Maybe you can, maybe you can do that, cover that with a blog post. But uh, for the most part, you're going to need a tool to rank for that term. And the thing about that is the thing to keep in mind here is that a lot of searches for, for anything, right? There's sort of an ideal way to present the information to the person who's searching for that term. And so the best way to rank for that is to actually give that person that information in that format. You know, if that's a tool, if that's a blog post, whatever it is. And the trick to SEO is figuring out what is sort of the minimum I need to get to that next point, right? Like what, what is the competition doing? In this case, if I'm trying to rank for real estate as a realtor or something like that, I know I would have to build a tool. I would have to scope out building a tool just like this. And then on top of that, probably do a whole lot more, like get a ton of backlinks, get a, build my brand so it's as big as some of these other guys. And that's probably never gonna happen as a realtor. So as a realtor, I would probably say the cost to getting ranked 
for terms like this is not gonna be worth it. Now, maybe there's other terms that you could get ranked for, right? That would be worth it. But if I were a realtor, I would not even try to get ranked. What I would do is I would just make sure that I showed up on all these sites, however that is. You know what? I know these are all lead gen sites, so I'd make sure I was getting leads from them. I'd make sure if they had a list of realtors, I was in there, make sure my property actually got in there. Uh, I think that probably happens automatically, but uh, just make sure you are showing up here. And I, I probably wouldn't uh, use SEO to rank for terms like this if I was a realtor, because the competition is just so stiff. So it would be a huge, huge undertaking that wouldn't be worth it. And so the, the, the trick in SEO is really to look at the competition figure out what is the intent of the keyword that, uh, that I'm trying to target, right? What does the person really need? What is the ideal piece of information or a uh, tool or whatever it is, the ideal presentation of that information for that user? What is the ideal? What is the perfect world? If I had an unlimited budget, what does that look like? And then look at the competition and see if they're doing that. These guys are pretty much doing that. So you have to, you know, this is very competitive space. So you would have to do that as well and a whole lot more. Almost no other, I mean, very few industries are actually like this. Uh, very few industries are this competitive in search. Even the ones that are sort of traditionally thought of as really being com competitive, they're really not. Uh, because people just aren't really, they don't really understand this concept and they're not really uh, hitting intent as well as you could. And so often there's a big gap there. And so if you can meet intent, you look at what's ranking. Can I meet intent better than that? What does that look like, right? How much better do I think I need to meet it? Uh, to, to rank, taking into account all of the, all these other things in SEO, like brand, uh, backlinks, you know, all that kind of stuff. How much farther do I have to go than the people who are ranking? And is that feasible within my budget? Um, and those are the key questions in SEO. And it, it turns out it's actually not that complicated uh, for a lot of industries. So how is this different from the way people tend to think about SEO? You know, in my experience, people usually think about SEO as like blog content, you know, getting title tags right, getting the keyword to show up in the, in the content several times, building backlinks to that content. That is old school stuff. Like if you're not thinking about SEO from what is the best experience for the user for this search, for whatever keyword I'm trying to, trying to rank for, then you're just gonna get killed by somebody who is, right? Even in a non-competitive industry, eventually some competitor is gonna figure this out and start just dominating the rankings, right? So it's important that you, you don't have to go all the way, right? If, you're, if your industry is not hyper competitive, you don't have to meet intent uh, in such a way that it costs an enormous amount of money. But you do have to sort of think in your mind, I better watch out for a competitor who starts doing that because they will outrank you. So it's really important to think about what is the best experience. And what's interesting about this is that when you provide a better experience for users, that gets you ranked in search. It also gets you more traffic in general. And so you can really dramatically simplify SEO by ignoring all that other stuff. Ignore keywords, ignore meta tags and, and title tags and meta descriptions and stuff like that. Ignore backlinks, ignore all that stuff. And just think about what is the best experience for a user for this, this, uh, uh, this search. And not only will that ultimately rank well in search, it will also drive traffic in other ways. So that's where you should start and then layer on the other stuff like backlinks and title tags and you know, keywords in the content, layer that stuff on later, but serve the user first.